Greetings, respected viewers. Um, I'm on Albion Street in London. Um, so well, this is the um, Bayswater area. So behind me is the house where William Makepeace Thackeray lived. He was born in India in uh, 1811, born to uh, British parents. He returned to the British Isles as a young child. Um, and his family were upper middle class. His father was a senior ranking civil servant. Thackeray himself went to Charterhouse School, um, which in those days, Ooh, I think it hadn't moved to Surrey. I think it was actually very close to St Paul's Cathedral at those times. It was shortly after his death that it moved out to, um, to Godalming, a bit outside London to the southwest, because it really was, well, it was uh, to do with Carthusian monks. That's why um, people who go to the school are called Carthusians. So what else about uh, Thackeray? Um, so what an odd middle name, Makepeace. Uh, anyway, he was a writer, a journalist, um, he had, was briefly a bureaucrat, and best known for the novel Vanity Fair. If you go back to John Bunyan, that 17th century Baptist preacher, uh, writing Pilgrim's Progress, uh, one, of the, one of the places which are, place which poses a, a peril to the mortal soul of a Christian is Vanity Fair. So a place of iniquity, as in where everybody's showing off, there's one upmanship, I've got more than you've got, being materialistic, worshipping mammon and so on. So Vanity Fair is really his send-up of upper-class um, British society. Uh, and it features Becky Sharp, and her name uh, indicates a lot about her, how she's sort of sharp-elbowed, but also um, um, very bright in the academic sense, but uh, possessed also of oodles of low cunning. Anyway, Becky, Becky Sharp goes to be a, um, a governess for this family deep in um, the countryside of northern England, um, who own huge amounts of uh, farmland. Mostly they've got sheep, uh, and that's that and actually marries into the family, is willing to coquette with other upper-class men despite being a wedded woman and all the rest of it. I shan't reveal the whole plot. It's set around the time of the Napoleonic Wars, going to Brussels um, right before the Battle of Waterloo and everything that the French are gonna win and trying to escape at some noble woman asking Becky Sharp whether she would mind lending her a carriage or some horses and Becky Sharp refusing to speak to this woman's servants who she sent to, to entreaty, or entreaty, but anyway, and saying this, this, this no one must speak to her, her, me herself. And Becky Sharp score saying, well, you cut me at the opera, as in you blanked me, you refused to recognize me because I come from humble origins. So now, up yours. Though she doesn't put it quite so indelicately. Um, and there met a number of fascinating characters. You should see the 1998 film of, of, of this, of Vanity Fair. Uh, now, Thackeray, he also um, edited um, um, Punch, punched this satirical magazine of the late 19th century. And the time of the famine in Ireland, like the late 1840s, it featured a lot of hibernophobic bile. Now, I know this was a humorous magazine, so um, although I'm not uh, a great fan of anti-Irish humor, um, I think, okay, being able to cracking a joke at our expense is not necessarily anti-Irish, it's just mirthful. Now, sometimes it would be in questionable taste, depicting us as Sibians and so on, but isn't it, is a joke just that, it's a joke? But some people don't get it. Do we really have to explain Santa to people? So some people who are the targets of the joke, i.e. me, or some other Irish people, don't realize what, uh, what humor is. Now I do, but some other people don't, even if I don't like it. Um, and then some people who are meant to be enjoying the joke um, are dim enough not to understand the difference between um, a wisecrack and reality and think that, that Irish people that we really are bestial and imbecilic and all the rest of it. Um, so that's that. But um, anyway, there was, there was some anti-Irish um, uh, racism in, in, in the British Isles at the time. He was a very lofty man, six foot three, wore glasses, hadn't been great at games uh, as a schoolboy. So that's Thackeray. Um, his, his works were very widely appreciated at the time. Now they, they say they regard as too turgid. Um, prose back then was heavy weather because it had to last as we had no, no radio even obviously you can forget about television so people had a much greater concentration span I suppose people have been conditioned not to have concentration spans with a thousand television channels and and mobile phones and screens everywhere it has to be color stimulation movement if you don't like it there's another alternative well in those days you might be stuck with a book so like at a lump that you had to get into it so people could pay attention uh, for a much longer time. People thought of a much, great deal more. Uh, oh, we're in the valley of the twitching curtains. Some old coffin dodger, she just pulled back the curtain to um, glower at me. Well, I shan't shrink back in horror. Anyway, that is enough about Thackeray.